Uh, and then there was the beginning of the implementation of the agreement. And I'm going to just um, say the two major things that had to happen at that point. One, Antioch had to appoint a director and some other staff for their part of the program. And the community had to choose a principal. And the com community group uh, selected a principal, Kenneth Haskins, whose background was actually in social work rather than education, but had worked in the New York area uh, working with communities and schools together. Uh, and um, he ended up, I can remember the meeting, it was in my living room with Ken, and uh, it was a unanimous decision. He walked out and we looked at each other and said, this is absolutely the man that we have to have as principal of the school. And I think we made a very good decision. He was not officially on board, however, until just before the beginning of the school year. I had a conversation with my father-in-law, who was a high school history teacher in Baltimore. And he was one of the founders of the Baltimore Teachers Union. And he said, if you guys are going to be talking about community school, you better talk to my friend Bill Simons, who's head of the Washington Teachers Union, because you better have the union on your side. So I called Mr. Simons, and he liked the idea. He thought he really liked the idea of community school, and he was supportive. And that came in handy later when there were questions raised about uh, the way, you know, the choice of the principal. Ken Haskins, uh, the community's role in the choice of the principal, in the choice of teachers, and so on. And he was with us all the way. And actually, the Washington Teachers Union in general uh, ended up really being in favor of community schools. So I think that was really uh, important. Uh, so finding out who your adversaries may be ahead of time and trying to make sure they're not adversaries. I know that at that time there were some groups uh, getting community schools going in New York, and they ran into trouble with some of the unions. Uh, and he is quoted in one of the later uh, articles, and we had there was a lot of press on the Morgan School, and in one of the articles he was quoted as saying, I don't see any contradiction between a community school and the rights of teachers. They can go together. What was Antioch controlling and what was the community controlling and how were they, they were supposed to be collaborating. So I'm going to go on to some of the things that happened that were not so happy and what I think we can learn from them. I think, by the way, two of the most important things the community did was to hire Ken Haskins, who unfortunately left after two years to take a fellowship at Harvard, and to have community interns. And they don't have them anymore, by the way. I was over at the school the other day. They're teacher's aides. But there's a lot that we were trying to do that is being done still at the school. And I can, if people want, I can talk about that afterwards. But what I'd like to do um, first is to talk about what happened that summer after we got control, <laughs> after we got a community school, and what happened that fall. Uh, that summer, uh, Antioch did appoint a director uh, for the, uh, the Antioch part of the program, a project director. Uh, and he came out at the beginning of the summer. Uh, as I had mentioned before, we chose a, a principal. He did not come on until the end of the summer, but did come. He was living in New York, came down sometimes to uh, on Antioch's payroll during the summer before he was appointed. That was a problem. And, Okay. Yes. I was talking about the Summer Institute, which Antioch was running, and which is and uh, and the Afros of, of some of the uh, African American uh, interns who were involved. Uh, so that there was a lot of tug back and forth in terms of the traditionalists and the non-traditionalists that continued some during the school year, uh, but there also was the feeling that the Institute had not done what the Institute should have done. First of all, we had thought it was going to be a summer Institute, not three weeks. And the beginning of the school year was utter chaos. And there's no other way to describe it. It was described that way by many people. It was described that way in the press. 
I, I should say that the, there was a lot of press on the Morgan School. I've said that twice, I think, already, because there really was. Uh, Ken Haskins, in fact, pulled together a bibliography, and he, it was not just on Morgan, it was on community school also more generally, that there were 200 items, but there probably were close to 100 of those were on the Morgan School. And so the press at first was very favorable. Uh, there's a quote about saying this is going to be the greatest innovation in D.C. education in a decade. Uh, and then the press started saying, problems at Morgan. Uh, and there were problems. Kids were running around the halls. They were running in and out of school. People didn't know where they were supposed to be because there weren't self-contained classrooms. There were centers, and the way the teams were supposed to work was the kids were going to be in different centers uh, doing different things at the same time. That actually is true in the Morgan in the uh, Marie Reed Community Elementary School today, and it's working very well. It's well organized, and the kids seem free to move around. And uh, I was over there on Wednesday, and uh, there's some aspects we didn't know were going to be continued that actually were continued. But at that time, it was separate classrooms, so the kids were going between. Uh, the first day of school, parents didn't know where they were supposed to bring their kids. It was just really, really a mess. Uh, the godsend for us was Ken Haskins, who was just exactly what we needed. He immediately uh, said that it has to change, things had to change for the kindergartners, that they needed their own class with their own teacher and to feel someplace where they would feel safe and secure. And so he made changes like that. He was always responsive to what the community wanted, but he also was very pragmatic about things and always very calm and open door for hearing from, uh, from everybody. Uh, and so Ken and also Hilda Mason, who I think had been brought on originally to work with the Antioch director, but became vice principal of the school and had a lot of experience in the schools. The two of them sort of brought order uh, out of chaos. And Ken's philosophy was partly that people, first of all, he really believed in community school. And he believed in some of the things that Antioch was trying to do in terms of new methods in education but he thought the teachers should be able to teach in a way that felt comfortable to them because otherwise er everybody was going crazy, the teachers and the kids. And so what he ended up doing essentially was teachers who felt more comfortable with a more traditional style of teaching could do that. And those who felt that they wanted to do more of the innovations could do that. And so there were different kinds of classrooms. And in fact, at, at the Marie Reed Learning, and it's called Marie Reed Community Learning Center, I think that's important. They're still keeping that. Even though there isn't a community board, there's a PTA. But they are keeping some of the things that, that were being done. Uh, at the, they have, the kids do move from center to center, and it seems to be working. I guess I may have said that before. It seems to be working very well. Um, yeah, there's, Mark. Yeah, there's one point. One point you might want to mention. Uh, Hilda uh, was married to. Uh, it was an integrated marriage, mm -hmm. and that was at that time. That was a very big deal to have an integrated marriage. Uh, he was uh, Charlie uh, had gone to uh, Harvard mm -hmm. as well, and so that. Uh, posed a very interesting sense of what the community was. Could be, yeah, could be. Was. yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Thank yeah. you all for coming. Bye, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. I'm going to say hello. All right, rolling. Ready. Okay, well, with the flexibility that Ken Haskins brought to the school, uh, it was possible to get things on an even keel. <laughs> and we even started to get good press again. <laughs> the press followed us, so it was ups and downs. And there were ups and downs over the years. There was a spot three years later where a bunch of teachers left. There were some conflicts between the board and the teachers. Probably a lot of things that one could predict uh, would happen. Uh, I do want to say, before I go into the general lessons that I think we got from this, I do want to say that going over to the Marie Reed Community Learning Center the other day, I felt pretty good about it overall. 
And I was afraid I might not, because I knew there had been a lot of tensions, uh, especially in the first few years. Uh, but people looked very happy. <laughs> and the kids were freely moving from one area to another that they were working in. And although we don't have community interns, there was a teacher's aide in every classroom. And the teachers and the aides were sometimes working with a small group of kids. And there'd be other kids working individually and in small groups and loads of posters all over. And one thing I should mention, because it does talk about community and response to the community, the demographics have changed radically. It is now 60% Latino, completely different. It had been 98% black. 60% uh, Latino, most of the rest black, uh, with some uh, about 3% whites and a few uh, Native Americans. Uh, so. Uh, what they are doing, though, I, I want to mention a couple things in terms of response to the community. They now have a counselor, a social worker, that they never had, a part-time psychologist, which they never had, and all three of those people are bilingual. The lady who took me around, who's the business manager and also a parent, uh, said that uh, last year uh, it was a, a DC reward school it was among the top five schools for rapid progress. So that, so I felt pretty good about that. But I want to talk now about some of the lessons that I think, these are the ones that, that I find important coming out of this, and particularly coming out of the connection between the community and Antioch College. I think it's terribly important that a community be very careful when they're going to put faith in an institution that agrees to help them. They need to know more details. Uh, they need to know more about what it means that the community and the college in this case will work together. Uh, the different forms of the proposal had different degrees of, as I said, the Adams Morgan Proposal said control, that's not what came out of the eventual one. And the degree of collaboration was really kind of not clear. Uh, the community has to be clear what staff members are going to be involved and their relevant experience. Antioch sent us somebody who had no exper practical experience in elementary schools, or I think anything, and he has written this himself in an article that he wrote called The Short Happy Life of the Morgan community school. He was actually withdrawn by Antioch in that fall because of all the problems and nobody knows exactly who was instrumental in his removal but he, he was he was withdrawn and he was never replaced by the way. They never sent another project director. Uh, he didn't have a, he had a lot of theory. He knew a lot about experiments that had been done. He knew nothing practically about the running of an elementary school which was why we were so lucky that we then had uh, Ken Haskins and Hilda Mason there. So not only who they are, but what their relevant experience is, and then the consistency in what is promised in different forms of, the, of agreement. Uh, and we need to understand the motivation of the institution and whether it is actually compatible with community goals. Community wanted a good school. <laughs> essentially. They wanted the community involved. They wanted a community to participate in things. They wanted the school to be responsive to the needs of the community. Not only the kids, but also the teenagers and, and adults in terms of, of uh, afternoon and evening programs, for instance. Uh, and Antioch wanted to have a place for their interns to go, and I think they wanted to try out some new things. But too many things were tried out all at once, and that's my second learning, my lesson. There's a real problem when you try to do a lot of things at the same time. For instance, in instituting some degree of community control and also innovations in educational methods. So I want to quote from Ken Haskins because I think it, it, this was in one of the newspaper articles. There are two important areas here. One, the ability of the community to have control over its schools and two, the introduction of educational innovation. To tie the two together, or to think one necessarily leads to the other, is the biggest mistake. What happened here is that innovation began before the community had control. Too many changes at once. And I think that's the big lesson. 
I have one more, one more thing which is related to that, that you need considerable time for planning for the introduction of new approaches and new methods, be they community involvement or be they educational innovation. Uh, and that was not done. There's a quote from Bishop Reed which surprised me, and I've seen somebody else refer to it, saying, Antioch wanted us to wait for a year, but we didn't. It's really interesting to me because I was chair of the schools committee, and I don't remember Antioch ever asking us that. But they obviously did raise it with some people in the community council. And I think that would have been a real good idea and to do the planning. One of the words that comes up in a lot of the early stuff is there are going to be pilot projects. So the innovation might be in a classroom or two classrooms, maybe some things for the whole school, but it was going to be piloted and evaluated. And that's another issue that I, I didn't mention here, which is one of the things that Antioch was supposed to do also was to get outside funding for evaluation of the program. There wasn't that first year, at least, any research done. There was no evaluation of what was going on. So lots of problems as well as you heard a lot about the bright spots, but there were lots and lots of problems. And I think a real lesson here, uh, especially in terms of community groups hooking up with other groups who are going to help them in some way.